There are heads in these beds, and I think they're from China. Their bright green leaves shine against the colors of fall, which is when they love to grow. In Tennessee gardens, bok choy and Chinese cabbage simply don't do well in the spring. In mid-July, I'm looking for a row to sow and grow some little transplants. So I make a furrow in an old lettuce bed or bean row or something like that. And then I take the seeds of the bok choy or Chinese cabbage and I roll them between my thumb and my finger, dropping, oh, 10 or 12 every foot or so. Then I take the back of a rake and I just kind of push them into the ground to make sure they're firmed in before I lightly rake over some dirt over the top of them. In about a month, I have some small little transplants that I'm ready to set out, oh, about a foot or 16 inches apart in a bed. I like to plant these things as soon after I get the beans or lettuce or squash out of the field because the soil will still have a bit of moisture in it. Bok choys and Chinese cabbage transplant very easily. Oh, between a month, maybe six weeks after they're planted, I lift them out of the ground, put them in a basket, and bring them down to the garden. I'm careful when I deal with plants not to touch the roots because there's oils on our fingers that I don't want to get on the roots. I hold them there right about uh, at the first leaf or two. And then I dig a little hole and I put the plant in the ground and then I squeeze a little bit of earth around it like that. Then if it's very dry, I'll put a little water on it and then I'll cover it up with some dry soil on top. And that way the moisture stays down underneath and the, if I watered it right now, it would get muddy and cake up there. But if I water it and then put dry soil on top, then it uh, doesn't cake up. And the dry soil on top keeps the moisture in by the roots where we want it. All that's left to do is a light hoeing once or twice, but weeds aren't really such a pressure in September and October, and they don't really require a whole lot of care. Insects and diseases don't bother these plants in the fall. Those problems only really happen when you try to grow these in the spring, which we don't do. Rubicon is the name of this Chinese cabbage, which makes the typical Napa head that you might find in a grocery store. And they're really good for just any recipe that would call for a regular cabbage. A bok choy variety that gets huge is called Joy Choy. And that's a dark green one with the white midribs used in Chinese cooking, stir fries and things like that. This is a smaller bok choy called Mei King. The dark green variety of bok choy is called tot soy, and it's as dark a green as spinach. Another Chinese cabbage variety we grow is called Tokyo Bikina. This is a loose leaf Chinese cabbage with a very light green color. These smaller plants were set out just a week or two ago, and these bigger plants were set out six or seven weeks ago. You can see how we use successive planting so that we have good sized heads for a longer season. We can keep these cabbages over the winter for a little while if we cover them up. So we make a little mini greenhouse. First, I make a big hole in the ground with this bar. Then I take an eight foot piece of conduit and I slip it in 
to that hole on either side of the bed. This makes a frame. We put some of this, what I call reme. It's what people used to use to cover their tobacco beds with. It's also called a floating row cover. Before it blows off, we grab a board and hold it down with the board. We also use sandbags or rocks or really just about anything that we can find to cover the reme up so it doesn't blow off. These cabbages then will have another eight or 10 degrees of frost protection and last that much longer into December and January. Sometimes we'll even mulch them with a little hay to further protect them from the winter freezes. I added bok choy seed to the crimson clover and daikon mix that I planted in this field. So this bok choy has been grown with no hoeing, no watering, no cultivation, mulching or anything. It was just flung out with the cover crops. That's easy gardening. When I grew up, cabbages just meant one thing, the common European cabbage that we made sauerkraut out of and coleslaw. And made in China was certainly suspect. But now, thanks to these Chinese imports, we have a wide variety of Chinese cabbages and bok choys to fill up our Tennessee fall gardens with. Now I'll show you how we enjoy these greens in kimchi. Into a bowl, we've chopped up Chinese cabbage and some of these red watermelon radishes. They're a daikon radish and some cayenne pepper. We're gonna add a cupful of minced garlic and some ginger that a friend of mine grew. So those are the five ingredients that we add when we make kimchi. Now I have to mix this up real good. I want to add about enough salt that it would be as if you were going to eat it so that it just tastes pretty good. As I work this salt in, the cabbage will start giving out some of its juice. Kimchi is a traditional sauerkraut from Korea, where, of course, Chinese cabbages and bok choys have been grown for a long, long time. One of the advantages to kimchi is how nutritious it is. It's packed full of vitamins A, B, and C, but maybe the best thing about it is the lactobacillus bacteria that is so beneficial as a probiotic. It's similar to what's found in yogurt. You can add lots of different things when you make fermented vegetables. Why they ferment almost any vegetable you can think of. In America, in Europe, we usually just make sauerkraut, which is salt added to the European cabbages. I got a crock a friend of mine made that I'm going to fill up with the mixture. So just like making sauerkraut, it makes its own liquid, but then we have to weight down the cabbage underneath something so that the liquid totally covers it. So these crocs have a nice handy little thing here that we drop down in there. And then we simply put a lid on it. Let that set for about two weeks and you have kimchi. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.